Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part four of my Session Players and Chord Track Explored course for Logic Pro 11. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use the multi-channel drum kit designer kits in Logic Pro 11. Prior to Logic 11, these were called the producer kits. These give you full multi-track control over the mixing and plugins added to your kit, so you can mix drummer just like any other multi-track drum recording. I'll also show you how to augment your drummer patterns with additional samples outside of Drum Kit Designer, so you can incorporate your own custom samples into your productions. Before we get into the video though, I need to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox redefines file storage, sharing, and collaboration for musicians, bands, artists, producers, and engineers. It allows you to upload audio files, stems, mix bounces, really any type of file you want, even complete DAW sessions, and collaborators can then be added to your projects and can leave timestamped feedback and voice recordings to your tracks. And that's not all. Boombox offers an extensive range of collaborative tools. This includes Boombox AI, an advanced virtual co-writer equipped with AI capabilities such as stem extraction, vocal isolation, MIDI idea generation, and lyrical generation. You can share and pitch your songs, beats, or samples with private or public playlists create customized artist pages with your own branding, discover new clients and collaborators, and manage song splits and song ownership with tools like professionally drafted legal contracts, track metadata, ISRC codes, and more. Visit boombox.io today and sign up to get four gigabytes of free storage or upgrade to one of their pro or premium plans for more storage space and additional pro features. If you open the library and to open the library, just press Y and you're going to go to drum kit and then you'll see all of the preset drum kits in drum kit designer. If you go down to multi-channel kits, you'll see all of them again, but they all have a plus next to them. These are called the multi-track kits, what used to be called the producer kits. And so if I choose the Portland plus kit, what this is going to do is it's going to swap out that instrument for a track stack. So the way this works is it creates a summing stack with the drummer region on it. And then inside of here, your overhead track has the actual drum kit designer on it. And then all of the subsequent tracks are just multi-channel outputs from drum kit designer. So this is a great way to have full mix control over your entire uh, drummer kit. The only downside here is if you've already customized your kit uh, with the standard drum kit designer and then you switch over to a multi-track version, it's going to change that customization. But now I have individual control of my overheads, kick in, kick out mic, snare top, snare bottom, hi-hat, my three toms, uh, the auxiliary percussion. There's even uh, room channels that sort of mimic the sound of like a drum room. So again, this gives you full mix control over your entire kit. Now, one thing I've done in the past, because I actually get a lot of mix clients who use Drummer, what I'll do is I'll convert this to MIDI. So I'll create a new MIDI track. And let's say I like the sound of the kit overall. I just want a little more punch or I want a different kick sample or I want a different snare sample. I want to augment the drum pattern that's already there with some additional samples. What I'll do is I'll copy this down. You just hold option and drag it down, convert to MIDI, and I'm going to call this track snare plus, and I'm going to call, I'm going to duplicate it again, and I'm going to call this one kick plus. And then what I can do is in each of these regions, I can delete all of the notes that are not kick or snare. The notes D1 and a sharp zero are our snare drums. So I'm just gonna select everything that isn't that and pull it out. And I'm gonna pull these notes up to D1 as well. And then I'll go into my kick plus track and everything that's not C1 is something other than a kick drum. So now I've isolated the MIDI for just my kick and snare and I could use quick sampler, I could use a third party instrument and I could load in a different sample if I wanted to. So for example, here I'm using Contact 7 as a third party instrument on the snare track. 
I'm going to set the map on this particular instrument to GM. And let's find a snare sound. So all the velocities are taken into account as well. And so now we've got this snare replacement track or layer track to augment uh, the drum pattern. Uh, likewise, I could use quick sampler if I wanted to and just drag and drop in one sample. So I'll go ahead and grab quick sampler, throw that on the kick track, and then find whatever sample file you want to use from your own personal sample library. So maybe I want to throw that in there. You just want to make sure to use the one shot option and you want to set the root key to C1 for kick drum and D1 for snare drum. So now every time there's a MIDI note on C1, it's going to trigger this kick sample. And because one of the more recent updates in Logic Pro allows you to put track stacks inside of other track stacks, you could actually take the entire Portland Plus kit here, plus your sample replacement tracks, and you could load those into a track stack, into a summing stack is what I prefer. And then I could just call this whole track drums, and I can you know add whatever bus processing on here I want. I can go into the track stack, maybe pull down the levels so we don't get any clipping. Okay, so this is something I do all the time. I will augment uh, drummer patterns that my clients have sent me in their mixes, and I'll just augment the kick and snare with another sample, or sometimes I'll do it with the toms as well. If you are going to take this approach, though, I highly recommend converting your drummer region into a MIDI region as well, so that the pattern of the main beat plus your snare and kick or whatever replacement tracks you're using all match up because if you start changing your pattern it'll make the groove of your main beat not match your snare and kick replacer tracks so those are some creative ways to use the multi-track kits in logic pro 11. if you like this video please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this as always thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching